वेलकम टू द सिक्सटीन एपिसोड ऑफ आहर गणा आफ्टर द ब्लिस्टरिंग हीट ऑफ द कावेरी रिवर बेड आई एम हैप्पी टू बी इन द मिड्स्ट ऑफ द मिस्ट इन द टी प्लांटेशन आई मिस्ट द टी प्लांटेशन ऑफ कन्नूर इन द नीलगिरीज तो यस आई एम बैक टू द वेस्टर्न गार्ड्स माई फेवरेट स्पॉट अगेन बट दिस टाइम आई एम इन द सदर्न close to the southern tip of the western ghats kunnur is lesser known than uti uti is uh, much uh, well known much more popular tourist spot but this is just about an hour's drive from kunnur at the same uh, altitude at the same height and you can be hardly believe that it's a summer it's 10:30 in the morning here and there is a strong mist which is blowing all around me you may be able to see it here also So I came walking in these tea, tea gardens last evening, and I felt this is a wonderful place to do the recording. So here I am, enjoying myself and doing the next episode of Ahar Gana. Of course, the tea plantations are not endemic to this uh, place. This is really forest region, and long, long time back during the British Raj, all the trees were cut down, and tea plants were transplanted either from Assam or from China, and they grow beautifully in this weather and that's why you find the tree plantations birds are still chirping beautifully it's a, it's really really nice to be here 10:30 in the morning i can't believe it <laughs> and that too this is part of tamil nadu in tamil nadu i always used to say there are only three seasons hot hotter and hottest but people here haven't heard that this is very different here just because of the altitude So great place to do my video so let me start off on the next episode and you know as always we are not here to talk about tea plantations or the western ghats or nature on this scale we are talking about nature on a much grander scale of the movement of the sun around the earth in sauramana in the last episode we talked about uh, uttarayana and dakshinayana In this episode I'll again talk about another two divisions of the Sauravarsha into two halves but they are called Devayana and Pitrayana Now astronomically they are very similar to Uttarayana and Dakshinayana except the starting point is different Devayana starts with the vernal equinox and ends at uh, autumnal equinox and Pitrayana starts at autumnal equinox and ends at vernal equinox So that's nothing nothing great you already seen it once in Uttarayana Dakshinayana you will see it again in Devayana Devayana and Pitrayana But what is interesting and this is something rare I have not done this in Ahargana so far what is interesting is not the astronomy in this case but what is interesting is the reason why these names came about why are they called Devayana and Pitrayana So it is associated with the devas and the pitrus the gods and the ancestors these two time periods large time periods two halves of the year why so this is coming because of a tradition in our hindu religion so the tradition is like this so you have the celestial sphere which is the entire space surrounding the earthly globe and all the latitudes including the equator the tropic of cancer tropic of capricorn are projected outwards into the celestial sphere in finite radius it's a model and then they are called the celestial equator and i would say celestial tropic of cancer celestial tropic of capricorn the latter two terms are not very often used but celestial equator is very well known in astronomy So the tradition we have in our religion is the entire space in the celestial sphere which is north of the celestial equator is dedicated to the devas and the entire space to the south of the celestial equator is dedicated to our pitrus our ancestors what does the word dedicated mean does it have any meaning i mean dedication is a sign of respect yeah so for example a more 
a more religious term would be consecrated. Now, for example, if I write a book and I say this, this book is dedicated to my wife, what does that mean? It's a sign of respect, right? It's not like I'm going to give all the royalty money to my wife. There's no material transactions involved there. Maybe I will give the royalty money to my wife, but that's a different matter. There is no material transaction associated with the dedication. Dedication is a sign of respect. You respect somebody and you dedicate something to them. So if you dedicate the entire half of the celestial sphere north of the equator to the devas, then it is a sign of respect to the devas. And south of the celestial equator to the pitrus, that's a sign of respect to the pitrus. So what happens is the celestial sphere north of the celestial equator would be Devaloka. Yeah? And the celestial sphere south of the celestial equator will be the Pitruloka. Some people call it Yamaloka, but Yama creates fear, yeah, death and fear, whereas if you say Pitru, that's a different matter, it creates respect. Now, once you make such a dedication, if the sun moves north of the equator and heads into Devaloka, then it is the dawn for the Devas. And then the sun moves all through north of the celestial equator and comes back to the celestial equator. That is the evening setting, end of the day for the Devas. And then it crosses over the celestial equator and starts going south of the celestial equator. It's now entering the Pitruloka. That is the dawn for the Pitrus. The day begins for them. And the next six months is the day for them. And then the day ends when the sun comes back to the celestial equator. So this is why we also have a tradition connected to this, which says that six months is daytime for the Devas and the other six months is night time for the Devas and daytime for the Pitrus, vice versa. So one year, one Saura Varsha of human beings like you and me is one single day-night pair for the Devas and the Pitrus. This is purely Kalpana, this is purely imagination, right? But I feel this is a nice imagination. There is some style to this. This is wonderful. This is something I can believe in. And now comes the next point. So when the sun moves, crosses the equator and goes down south of the celestial equator, that moment I told you is the dawn for the Pitrus, it's the beginning of the day for the Pitrus. And that period is considered a good period when people like us should remember our Pitrus. People who have gone before us in our families and we should do Pitru Tarpana. And not just one single day. Now we take a concept from Chandramana, a Paksha, and bring that here and say this entire Paksha, you do Tarpana every day for 15 days. That is Bhadrapada Masa, Krishna Paksha. You do Pitru Tarpana. And that Paksha is called Pitru Paksha. Right? In every Chandramasa, there are two Pakshas, there are 12 Chandramasas in a year, so there are uh, 24 Pakshas in an entire year. But out of the 24, you pick one and say, this is Pitru Paksha. Why? Because during that period, the sun will move south of the celestial equator. And the day begins for the Pitrus and you remember them. And you seek their blessings by doing Pitru Tarpana during that entire Paksha. So this is the main thrust of this episode, not the astronomy. Astronomy already seen in Uttarayana Dakshinayana and this is no different. This will be the same, exactly the same. But the fact that Pitru Paksha, which is a major festival, is celebrated during this time. And the end of Pitru Paksha obviously is Mahalaya Amavasya. Because Krishna Paksha ends with an Amavasya.
So that is what I wanted to cover in this episode. Yes, I will show you the astronomy also. It will be nothing new there. It will be a rerun of the previous one with different starting points. Good to watch. So I'm going to roll the animation now. Take a look. Okay, let's get started. In the last episode, we saw all about Uttarayana and Dakshinayana, the two divisions of a Sauravarsha. In this episode, we will focus on another two divisions of the Sauravarsha called Devayana and Pitrayana. These are not as well known as Uttarayana and Dakshinayana. And for this episode, I am not going to use Surya Siddhanta F's reference. Instead, I am going to use a text called Urayan for research into the antiquity of the Vedas, which was written by Sri Bhal Gangadhar Tilak. So what is Devayana and Pitrayana? So before we get into that, let me quickly recap the four new points that we had covered in the last episode. Meshadi we already know, but I had mentioned in the last episode itself that for these topics, Meshadi is not important. Instead, there are four additional new points which become important. One is the Vasanta Vishwat, which typically happens around 20, 21st of March every year in the Christian calendar. Then comes the Uttarayana, a point, and when the sun comes to that point, it will usually be 20th or 21st of June every year. The third point which is of interest is Sharad Vishwat, which is 23rd or 22nd of September, when the sun comes to that point, and it is exactly opposite Vasant Vishwat. And these are the points where the ecliptic intersects the celestial equator. And finally, you have the Dakshinayana point and the sun comes there typically around 21st or 22nd of December. So these are the four new points of interest. And I had also introduced you to a different model, the model of the celestial sphere. I'm going to use the same model here again and bring on some additional lines and you can see that these red lines indicate the celestial tropic of cancer and celestial tropic of capricorn this yellow line in the center is the celestial equator so the vishwat points are where the ecliptic this green line is the ecliptic it's now looking like an arc and that is where it intersects the celestial equator and Uttarayana is the point where it intersects the celestial tropic of Cancer. Dakshinayana it intersects the celestial tropic of Capricorn. We have seen all this in the previous episode. So now this episode I am going to start from March 20th 2021 that's the date and the Sun at that point is on the Vasanta Vishwat. The previous episode I had started when the sun was on Sharad, uh, uh, sun was on Dakshinayana, but now I am starting at Vasanta Vishwat. The sun is on Vasanta Vishwat. So I am going to roll the animation now, and you will see the definition of Devayana. So you see the sun is now moving. It's moving in a northerly direction, but what is more important now is the fact that it is north of the celestial equator. Now the sun has come to the Uttarayana point. Now it's moving in a southerly direction, but it is still north of the celestial equator. The entire period when the sun is to the north of the celestial equator, is called Devayana. Part of it it moves in a northerly direction, part of it it moves in a southerly direction, that doesn't matter. Now the focus is on the fact that the sun 
is entirely north of the celestial equator during this period. And why is this period called Devayana? Because the north celestial sphere, this entire space, is consecrated to the Devas, the gods. And if the sun is moving in the north celestial sphere, then that is considered, imagined to be the daytime of the Devas. And that means this period where I started this animation is the dawn for the Devas. And where I am ending this animation now, that is the dusk, the sunset for the Devas. So this entire period when it is daytime for the Devas, is referred to as Devayana. Now, this phrase also has a, a religious or a theological meaning mentioned in the Vedas and the Upanishads and that meaning is that Devayana is the path that the human soul takes to approach the divine, to approach God, to reach God and if the human soul takes this path, then there is no more rebirth. That means mukti has been achieved. But Bal Gangadhar Tilak has interpreted this using various reasoning as an astronomical phenomena. That this period when the sun is north of the celestial equator, that is known as Devayana. And it is the daytime for the Devas. Now, in fact, the fact that this is daytime for the Devas is mentioned in Surya Siddhanta also. So, if this is Devayana, then you can guess what Pitrayana would be. So, the sun is moving now from the Sharad Vishwat, it is moving in a southerly direction, but it is now south of the celestial equator. It is approaching the Dakshinayana point. Now it is moving in a northerly direction, but the important point is it is still south of the celestial equator. And that is where the focus is. As long as the sun is south of the celestial equator, that period is known as Pitrayana. The entire period when the sun is south of the celestial equator is known as Pitrayana. Once again, the reasoning is the same. The idea is that the south celestial sphere is dedicated to the Pitrus, our ancestors or the departed souls. Now, some people call it Yamaloka, but it's more amenable to think of it as Pitruloka because Yama invokes a sense of fear, whereas if you think of it as Pitruloka, it's not so fearful. And when the sun is south of the celestial equator, then this is the daytime for the Pitrus. And where I started this animation, that is the dawn for the Pitrus. And then it is the daytime for the Pitrus. And where I am ending this animation, this, this is the dusk or sunset time for the Pitrus. And this entire period when it is south, of the celestial equator is known as Pitrayana. Now, again it has got a religious and a theological meaning and that meaning is uh, mentioned in the Vedas and Upanishads and that says that this is the path taken by the human soul after death. And by taking this path, the human soul reaches Pitruloka. That means there will be rebirth, not Mukti. So that is the theological meaning, but Bal Gangadhar Tilak has uh, interpreted this to mean that this is a time period in a calendric sense when the sun is south of the celestial equator. Now, the Surya Siddhanta goes in this direction, but it uh, says that the South Celestial Sphere is uh, dedicated to the Asuras, not the Pitrus. That's the difference. Whereas in the Vedas and Upanishads, the term Pitrayana, as I told you, used in a religious sense. But Surya Siddhanta talks about Sura, Asura, Sura, Asura. 
But Sri Bal Gangadhar Tilak is not taking Surya Siddhanta as his base. He is using the Vedas, the Samhitas and the Brahmanas. But he has read many of them and interpreted it as an astronomical phenomena. And defined Devayana, Devayana and Pitrayana as the two halves of the human year. And these two halves of the human year put together make a day-night pair of the Devas and Pitrus. That is an Ahoratra, Dina, Ratri combination, Ahoratra of the Devas and Pitrus. And the day and night of the Devas and Pitrus are opposite of each other. When it is day for the Devas, it is night for the Pitrus and vice versa. Also, it's worth mentioning that uh, whereas here I am saying that the South Celestial Sphere is dedicated to the Pitrus, in the Surya Siddhanta, it says that the moon is dedicated to the Pitrus, not the South Celestial Sphere. So, these are traditions, they have changed over time, different texts mention different traditions, but they are all our traditions. And the ones which uh, Sri Balgangadhar Tilak has taken, he has taken a reference from many of the Vedas, Samhitas, Brahmanas, etc. and then come to these conclusions. So this idea of Devayana and Pitrayana are less well known. But I wanted to cover it, number one, for the sake of completeness. If you have seen the sun's movement from solstice to solstice in the previous episode, and that was Uttarayana and Dakshinayana, then this makes logical sense to complete this portion also, where the sun is moving from equinox to equinox. And that creates two other divisions. We don't use them today, but they were used at one point in time. There is a second reason why I came to this topic of Devayana and Pitrayana, because it leads to another topic called Pitrupaksha. So what is Pitrupaksha? Now you may know that Pitrupaksha is a period in time uh, when many of us Hindus do Pitru Tarpana. That means we remember our ancestors and we do special religious ceremonies in honor of their ancestors, in their remembrance. And Pitrupaksha is always Bhadrapadamasa Krishna Paksha. So that clearly means that it is, uh, the definition is coming from the Chandramana calendar because it is a Paksha and it is a Krishna Paksha. Now why is that specific Paksha, Bhadrapadamasa Krishna Paksha, chosen as the period when we should remember our, our ancestors and do additional religious ceremonies. Now I'm going to explain that now, but this is not something which I took from Surya Siddhanta. This is not even uh, confirmed by Sri Balgangadhar Tilak, though I am using Sri Tilak's logic and extending it forward to come up with the next part of the animation. So you can think of it as my observation and my proposal as to why that specific period in time is called Pitrupaksha. So let me move the animation forward. So I changed the date to Bhadrapadamasa Purnima of 2021. So this is the end of Shukla Paksha. So this is September 21st, 2021. And in this model, you cannot see the sun at this point in time because the sun is on the other side of the celestial sphere during Purnima because the sun and the moon are in opposition. So let me now move to where the sun is. So I am spinning the celestial sphere and there is the sun. And you can see immediately that the sun is just north of the celestial equator. And it is positioned to cross over into the South Celestial Sphere. So this is the end of Shukla Paksha. This is the date of Purnima. I roll the animation and the sun is crossing over to the South Celestial Sphere. That means this is the dawn of the Pitrus. And that is why this Paksha is declared as Pitru Paksha. And we are told to do Pitru Tarpana to remember our ancestors and pay our respects to them because this is the dawn of the Pitrus. And this entire Paksha ends with this Amavasya here when the moon is in conjunction with the sun 
and this amavasya is known as mahalaya amavasya or sarva pitru amavasya so this entire period is the dawn of the pitrus and hence it's called pitru paksha and we do pitru tarpana this is my proposal but there are some problems with this the fundamental issue is that the definition of a paksha comes from chandramana and the definition of crossing over to the south celestial sphere is sauramana because this you are talking about vishuvat and uh, ayana etc which is completely in sauramana and when you bring these two together you know that they are not in sync if the chandramana keeps falling out of sync and then an adhika masa is introduced to force it to come back into sync so what you saw just now in 2021 it may not always happen what does that mean so let me show you an example from 2020 i'll just go one year before this so this is 2020 bhadrapada masa purnima the moon is here and it is full moon <clears throat> so this is the end of shukla paksha now let me search for where the sun is and here is the sun so you can guess what the problem is going to be so pitru paksha is going to start from here so now we are in krishna paksha and this is called pitru paksha and we are doing pitru tarpana during this period so now i am waiting for this period to complete i am waiting for the next amavasya which would be the mahalaya amavasya and there is the moon it's come in conjunction with the sun so this is mahala amavasya and i stop doing pitru tarpana but the sun is still in the north celestial sphere the dawn for the pitrus has not yet started but i have stopped my pitru tarpana so this is a situation in 2020 where pitru paksha ended too early if you get what i mean a complementary problem happens this year in 2023 what does that mean so in 2023 i have again positioned on bhadrapada masa purnima so let me now look for where the sun is and here is the sun that means already the sun has crossed over into the south celestial sphere that means the dawn of the pitrus has already started but i have not been doing pitru tarpana i am going to start only now because this is when shukla paksha ends and krishna paksha begins here so now i am doing pitru tarpana but this is a situation where i start doing pitru tarpana a few days too late because the dawn of the pitru has already started but i was not doing pitru tarpana because pitru paksha starts after the sun crosses over to the south celestial sphere and this is the next this is the mahalaya amavasya when the sun and moon are in conjunction and this is the end of pitru paksha so just because the concept of paksha is coming from chandramana it goes out of sync so what we can only say is broadly somewhere around bhadrapada masa krishna paksha this way that we give or take a few days the sun will cross over to the south celestial sphere and the dawn of the pitrus will start not exact but approximate but there is a second problem with this which is more complicated this shri tilak shri bal gangadhar tilak refers to which is that today in our life span you are seeing that the sun is crossing over to the south celestial sphere in the vicinity of bhadrapada masa krishna paksha but this tradition of pitru paksha has been there for many centuries or probably many millennia and long long time back the sun was not crossing over to the south celestial sphere during bhadrapada masa krishna paksha so what changed between today and long long back this is exactly similar to what i said in the previous episode that uh, makara sankranti today it does not begin uttrayana but it began uttrayana long time back 
Here it is the converse. Today the sun is crossing over during Pitrupaksha to the south celestial sphere, but long, long time back it did not cross over. So what is changing over long periods of time is that this position of Sharad Vishwath is not fixed here. It keeps moving. Every 72 years it moves by one degree in, in any given direction. But that is the topic for the next episode because that is the topic about uh, precession of the equinoxes and that is the topic of uh, the Sayana and Nirayana systems. So I will not talk any more about that right now. I will close this animation here at this point in time. Once again, this has been a reasonably long and a reasonably complex episode. Thank you very much for your patience and thank you very much for watching. So that was about Devayana and Pitrayana. Concept similar to Trayana Dakshinayana, lesser known than the two, but leading up to the definition of Pitrupaksha. I feel I should make many more videos here. It's, it's so pleasant here, it's so wonderful. There is no heat, though, though I am in the beginning of summer out here at 11.30 in the morning. But that brings me to the end of this video. And the next episode, uh, I'm still debating whether to move on to Ritu because that is the next division of the Sauravarsha that I have to cover. And that is six divisions of the Sauravarsha. So we have seen the 12 divisions Rashi. We saw two divisions Uttarayana, Dakshinayana, two divisions Devayana, Pitrayana. And what's left remaining is the six divisions which are the Ritu. But maybe this is also a good time to talk about why Makara Shankaranti is believed to be beginning of Uttarayana, but it is not. It's a little bit complex astronomical uh, phenomena involved there called precession of the equinox. But I do have an animation for that which captures visually the precession of the equinox and I can take you back in time, thousands of years back in time using Stellarium as a time machine and show you what happens. So most probably that is the one I will get into uh, in the next episode before I go on to Ritu. But be that as it may, until I see you in, again in the next episode, as always, I request you, if you like these episodes, and even if you did not like them, please, please forward the links of this channel to all people in your contacts and encourage them to watch this series, because this is the way you will get, all of us Hindus will get to understand the real astronomy behind our Panchanga. So once again, thank you very much uh, for having the patience to was watch through this episode. And until I see you again next time, take care and bye-bye.